Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm doing another turntable review today, doing something slightly different than last time. Last time I did a full unboxing review, but that ended up being a very long video, so I'm just trying to do it just to review this time, so it should be some a bit shorter, and then you guys can let me know what you think, if you prefer the longer videos, if you prefer just the reviews. I might end up going back to doing the longer ones, but then just cutting them into chapters so you can skip to the review. I'm not entirely sure yet, just switching it up a bit. But anyway, this is the GPO PR50 turntable. It's made by GPO, obviously. And this is from their premium range of turntables that include an Audio-Technica moving magnetic cartridge, a counterweight. So you'd think high specs should be relatively good. This one, right now on Amazon, it's currently unavailable. I did message um, the company because I didn't want to do a review of something that's discontinued, but they assured me it's not discontinued. They're just having trouble sourcing some parts right now, as a lot of companies are, but it's not discontinued, so it should be coming back soon. And the retail price of this is £125, so in the competing with the Audio-Technica LP60X kind of range, um, I actually got this for £65, they had a really good deal on Amazon, so I decided to pick it up to review. So some of the specs it's got, obviously moving magnetic uh, cartridge, counterweight, it's got Bluetooth, it's got USB recording, um, auto stop, a headphone out, aux out, so obviously um, it's got pitch control up here, that's what that's for. So. It should, on paper, be a relatively decent model. So first of all, I'm just going to take you on a wee tour. It does have a little lid on there. I'm just not showing, I'm not keeping it down just because of the glare there. And if you notice when I lift it up, it's quite creaky. That is an incredibly creaky hinge. Um, so I'll just show you the back first, do a little tour of it. So here it's got some kind of rubbery foam feet. It does have like little speaker ports there. It doesn't actually have speakers built in. So maybe this was supposed to have it and they manufactured that or they're just borrowing parts from somewhere else. It does say it's designed by them in the UK, but no, even though it does look like it should have, it doesn't have speaker built in. It's got aux in, aux out, DC in, aux in, so no grounding or anything. It does have a built in preamp. This is one of the silliest things on the counterweight. That bit with the numbers on it doesn't actually move independently to the weight, so it's meaningless. It's just printed on. Um, but we'll talk more about that in a second. So here we've got a felt platter mat. It's really thin, cheap feeling. And this is what it came like, with all these like marks and stuff on it. This is the dirtiest platter mat I've ever seen. It's like that on the other side as well. It's not like a dust, it's weird. It's just kind of grotty a bit. And um, I also had a problem, the cartridge was like very um, dirty as well. Didn't look nice. I've got a close up picture of that. Then also the little circlip here on the platter was rusty. I've got a picture of that as well. Um, so even though this was a brand new product, like it, ha it clearly hadn't been opened, the box and everything, and was perfectly fine and everything was still sealed in the original factory packaging. Um, and it was marked as brand new on Amazon. It just came, you know, very dirty. So that was the best first impression. But let's talk more about this. Obviously it's got its little this is how it came, by the way. It came with everything put on it, just you kind of lift this out of the box. Um, so we'll move that. It's got a plastic platter that is very noisy. So I don't know if I just show you. Like it makes a lot of noise and um, doesn't feel high quality. Um, Plastic head shell, that's like a chrome plastic there, that little bit there is metal. Uh, plastic, oh no sorry, that is metal. Uh, counterweight, but plastic construction there, plastic 
plastic. All these buttons are plastic and everything. This looks like it would be a standard like um, half inch thing that you could easily swap in and you can remove it but as you can see it's not actually got the contacts there it's wired in and that's plastic so so you can change the cartridge it's just not as easy as the proper half inch ones where you can just remove the whole sh head shell and just easily swap it all about I will say the counterweight is not is normally considered a plus this one is not good at all. Never mind what I showed you about the numbers being on it that don't mean anything and are also on the wrong way because this is how it was put on. Um, this came, they had preset up the counterweight and no joke, I weighed it and it had nine grams of tracking force applied to it. Bearing in mind this Audio Technica cartridge is rated for 2.5 to 3.5 grams. And the lowest I could get it to track by putting that all the way to the back is 3.4 grams, which it's just under, you know, what this cartridge rates for the highest. I typically like to put these around 3 grams, just kind of in the middle of their rated spec. But yeah, no, so the counterweight isn't very good. That's very lightweight. It doesn't actually give you enough you know play to actually get the weights right because I had to put it all the way back and it's still not as light as I'd want it and again they shipped it with nine grams of tracking force which is not good for this Cons especially considering like this is very lightweight as well because this is all plastic so I don't know why it's struggling so much to properly counteract it but so yeah so far the counterweight's not very good it has a pitch control oh it has a pitch control which is a positive because this ran about 1.7% fast when I did my RPM tests. It also had quite high wow and flutter ratings, so that's not good either. Um, the buttons here look and feel really cheap and nasty, not the nicest. Um, I wish, I'm going to play you sound samples obviously from what this sounded like when I did the direct line sample and obviously when I did the USB recording. I wish I could get you a sample of what it sounded like through the headphone jack. It's one of the worst sounding things I've ever heard. It was so thin and tinny and even with this, because this is the on and volume control so you click it it goes on and then you can control the volume even with the, that maxed out it was really quiet and yeah it was really tinny and weak and just it was horrible so if you do i mean i'm giving you some spoilers right now that i would not recommend this turntable for any price but um yeah no so that was awful i'd never use that again we'll try and forget that that exists um the first thing I noticed when I put this on was that the motor noise is really loud, it whirs a lot, so I've got a wee clip of that, I recorded that with my microphone for you to take a listen to now. So yeah, does it sound great? So even before I put a record on I wasn't too excited about that. The first time I listened to it was through this, not very good. It does sound alright when I did RCA into my speakers, but those are very expensive speakers. So, you know, I mean, it doesn't sound good as from my turntable, but it doesn't sound as bad as through there. Um, the Bluetooth, um, when it was connected, it, was, it sounded fine. Like, there wasn't much latency or anything. It didn't drop out. But getting anything connected to this was a nightmare it just hardly ever worked and it was a real pain and the manual isn't very helpful I do want to mention in the manual this manual is made specifically for this turntable and yet when it talks about replacing the stylus it just shows you a completely different cartridge in a, on a whole different unit um, and yeah no it doesn't mention anything about setting the counterweight or anything it doesn't tell you what the correct tracking force should be so if you just get this and you read this, even if you read this, 
you're not getting much information so you'll probably just if you're a beginner you'll just leave it on what it came with that that nine grams of vinyl crushing pressure but yeah so that's another side point of the manual it's not i mean it tells you what the buttons are but other than that it's a bit of a waste of paper in my opinion um so yeah sign fine on bluetooth I've got a sample for you that I recorded with this through my recorder, the RCA, direct into my computer and the software, so I'll let you listen to that now. Yeah. I'm little Willie from around the way. So, I'll be honest, it might just be because I listened to that right after this, but I was pleasantly surprised by that. I mean, it's not great, uh, you know, by any, but this cartridge is a good cartridge for the price. I feel like the main issues that let it down were like the, the other circuitry involved in this, because like I said, whatever they did to that headphone socket was just, it ruined everything, it wasn't very good at all. But the actual sound quality it was a bit noisy, you could hear some of that rumble from the motor, it wasn't the best. Because the motor actually, you can see it's up there, so it's closer than what it should normally be. Normally they put the motor all the way, like the opposite side of where, uh, you can see that move again. Normally they put that all the way to the opposite side of... Uh, where the cartridge is so you don't get as much feedback but you did. I had to stay incredibly still when I was doing that because even though when I was recording it, even though this the actual plinth of this is actually, it's not that lightweight, it is all plastic but it still it does have some weight to it. It's, it's heavier than that Sony one that we reviewed last time but the actual platter is so lightweight and really flimsy so that shakes a lot and picks up vibrations so you do have to be quite still around this and um, I did notice that there was a problem with the tone arm lift that sometimes when you put that down it wouldn't go down all the way so you had to like push it down more to get it to properly track and otherwise it would just be skipping along but no the actual sign from that wasn't that bad then we go on to the USB recording. So to get that to work, you have to put your USB stick in there, you put it onto turntable mode, you get that set up, you move that over, um, you press record, record it. You can do, if you like double tap the record button while it's playing, it'll put it into different tracks and things. Then once you're done, you just press stop. So I've got a sample uh, that I recorded from this. So yeah, quite noisy, you could hear it especially at the start of that clip I played you. It only records at 128 kilobits per second. So not the best for if you're actually wanting to properly listen to music that you record from this and enjoy it. But for archival purposes, it's it'll do the job. But yeah, no, certainly not great sound quality by any means. Um, that is about it from what I actually have to say about this thing. Obviously, you've heard what I've, you've heard what this it sounds like, you've heard me talking about this, but overall it, there's not that many pros to this, I'll be completely honest with you. The cartridge is a nice cartridge so it is on paper better than one of those suitcase all-in-ones, but I have actually, you know, I've experienced one of those, the Crosley Cruisers in like a store and it felt much better built than this. So obviously, other than the horrible creaking, the fact that, that a lot of it came dirty, that this is really just rattly and loose. This switch also, I don't know if they put it on wrong because like at some point it turns freely but then it just kind of grinds at some point, like the plastic parts are rubbing together. I recorded a bit of that with a microphone as well. <laughs> Oh, 
but yeah no so it just it feels really badly built and it looks cheap and nasty the only good thing about the construction is that the, the actual plane is quite heavy which is a plus but other than that I don't think I could recommend this over like a cheap Crosley or whatever it just yeah it has the magnetic cartridge but the counterweight that it comes with is kind of useless it came really dirty and nasty, the platter's awful, the buttons feel cheap and terrible, the Bluetooth is a nightmare to connect. Yeah, it's got pitch control, but that's only because if it didn't have the pitch control, you'd be listening to everything too fast and the wow and flutter is too much, so it just kind of warbles anyway. And I said before that I got this for £65 and I wouldn't even, even if you can get it that low, no matter what price you can get this at, the only thing that's kind of decent on this is the cartridge and you can get that cartridge for like 13 pounds. So I would highly recommend not buying this, especially not for the 125 pounds that they're trying to charge for this. Bearing in mind that this is part of their premium range, so they've got stuff that they wouldn't consider premium. And if this is what they consider premium, I don't want to go anywhere near the stuff that they do not consider to be premium. So like I said, don't get this, it's nasty, it's cheap, it comes dirty and kind of gross, a lot of the features just don't work as well as they should, the headphone sounds terrible, like I couldn't get you a sample on it but take my word for it, sounds terrible, just uh, no. If for whatever reason you get given one of these or you're forced to spend any time with it whatsoever, just steer well clear of the headphones. If you're paying into decent enough speakers, yeah, it sounds good, but any turntable that has that cartridge will sound good through some decent speakers, honestly. Um, but yes, no, so unfortunately, I'm yet to review on this channel a turntable that I actually enjoy. But hopefully that day will be soon. I've, I enjoy a lot of other things that I've reviewed for this channel, just I've not had much luck with the turntables yet. So yes, not discontinued. You can get one, sadly, probably should be discontinued. I wouldn't want anyone to buy this. So steer clear, but subscribe to this channel so you can see more reviews and learn more of what to avoid. Um, I do know that GPO make a lot of other things. Techmoan did a video on their boombox, their Brooklyn boombox that's ridiculously expensive and equally crap like this is. So yeah, steer clear, but subscribe to the channel, hit like, comment, and I will see you next time guys. Bye!